Hey, Walt and Mike here from StogieReview.com with another Herf and Heads video review thing. <laughs> and uh, this time around, we are smoking a sample that a sample that has been released and uh, readily available, even though ours still say "sample" on the band. And that is the Amer the uh, the Alec Bradley American Classic Blend. Now, this cigar came to me several maybe months ago, a couple of, a couple of months ago from uh, Alec Bradley, and uh, they sent two samples. So when Mike and I got together at Cigar Fest, I handed him one, and I kept one, and, and the idea was to either do one of these surf and head videos or like a joint first impressions review or something like that. But, uh, you know, it, it was some time in between when I got them and when I got together with Mike, and then it's been a little while since Cigar Fest. So we are really late to the game with this, uh, with this particular cigar. Uh, however, I, I think Jerry smoked and mentioned this cigar in a in a week in smoke. So uh, you ha you can actually get some uh, a little bit of feedback on you know on the current release. I don't know whether things have been tweaked or not, uh, but I would imagine with Alec Bradley sending out samples that this cigar would be uh, you know in the final stages and and have been released. So uh, about this cigar, I've got uh, you know, the information sheet here. And uh, comes in two, three, four, five, six sizes: Corona, Robusto, Toro, Churchill, Torpedo, and Gordo, which is a six by sixty. Uh, MSRP ranges from three ninety five for the Corona up to five fifty for the Gordo. Uh, the wrapper is Honduras Connecticut shade. The binder is Nicaraguan Jalapa, and the filler is uh, Nicaragua Esteli and Condega. So they don't give you the the leaf types, uh, they're just telling me that it's uh, the binders uh, Jalapa from, Nic or from Nicaragua the regions and such but uh, basically the little bit of description that they're giving me just says that it is uh, mild to medium bodied you know, on and on and on and they give you the flavor description but we don't need that we're going to make it up as we go <laughs> so Mike, uh, take a, a good long look at your cigar and tell us about it it really i mean mine really looks nice i mean there's really no protruding veins or any major defects or anything else the foot looks a little funky and i don't i don't know if it's it it's almost like it's crooked so maybe like the cutter was dull or something and it just went crooked or got dinged against something i don't know but other than that i mean everything else looks really really nice with the cigar yeah, I agree. Uh, it's got an, it's a little bit of rough texture. It's kind of toothy. The, the color is really consistent head to foot. It it looks really nice. Um, it's got sort of a matte finish. It's not doesn't have much of an oily sheen. I mean, the light is glaring off of it, but it doesn't have that rich, oily appearance uh, that you, you get in a lot of cigars. Uh, the cap looks neatly applied, and it rolls over the shoulder of the cigar quite a bit. Um, you know, one of the things I can't stand is when the cap just barely rolls over the shoulder, and then when you flip it, you end up with the cap falling off, and then you get that little ring that falls off, and then the next thing you know, the cigar is unwinding. Uh, this one doesn't look like that is going to be an issue at all because of how far over the shoulder the cap rolls. Well, it looks nicely packed. There, there it focuses. But mine, mine doesn't feel real toothy. I mean, mine's pretty smooth. I don't know why. And the, the seam down the cigar is nice and straight, not all jagged. So, all in all, you know, I think this is A plus as far as cosmetics go. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And it feels pretty packed. I'm not feeling any soft spots, so we should be pretty good when it comes time to cut and light the cigar. I have a small spot right at the band, right there. So I don't know if it's just the band, or it feels like it pushes in a little too far to be just the band, but we'll see. The aroma reminds me of uh, farm country. It's got that little bit of a manure sort of aroma to it. You know, when you're driving down the road and you have the farmer off in the distance spraying something out of the back of his tractor. You know what it is, but you don't want to know what it is. The next thing you know, you get hit in the face by that smell and you're trying to roll up the windows real fast. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's my neighborhood, yes. <laughs> not, not quite as pungent, but it does have that sort of manure-esque sort of aroma. Foot has more of a sweeter. Yeah, you're right. It, it's definitely different than the than the wrapper. Yeah, it's a, like a sweetish, sweet hay kind of, or sweet tobacco. It's hard to discern from it. I'll go along with that. Sounds good. Sounds good. Let's, let's go with that. We'll roll with it. <laughs> All right. Snip this thing. I really need to send my polio cutter back. It's getting pretty dull. Now mine has a really, really loose draw. So does mine, and I don't like the pre-light taste at all. Yeah, it's kind of like a... Like vomit. All right, maybe not that far, but uh, it's pretty bad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that might be the first time anybody has used that term to describe it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really don't like that pre, uh, that pre-light taste. We're yeah, gonna... Funky, <laughs> like, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah, it's... I don't... Yeah, it's bad. We're gonna light it anyway. See how it goes. Hey. Maybe you'll get the, the real thing coming up. <laughs> oh, this could be a good one. Well, uh... Looks like Mike's using his creme brulee torch, and I am going to use uh, Prometheus Retro Lighter. And in doing so, I'm going to pimp our contest a little bit more. If uh, if you'd like to win one of these Prometheus Retro Lighters, uh, not this particular lighter, this one is mine and you can't have it, but uh, if you want one that says Angelenos on it, uh, look above, up there, if you're on StogiReview.com, there's a blue bar running across the screen. It's our contest announcement bar. Inside of that uh, contest bar, there's a link. You click on it, it'll take you to the current contest if, if this is if you're watching this in the month of July 2011. And uh, you know, you can read the contest details and enter to win a free Prometheus retro lighter. And uh, the retro part is the flint action, which is still pretty cool. I don't get tired of that. So impressions of that first puff. Tell me it's not vomit flavored. Kind of buttery. I'm really getting a, a buttery type taste. I mean, I don't think it's vomit with butter. But <laughs> <laughs> I, buttery vomits. Yeah, that would be good. It's like popcorn the second time around. Spice through the retro ale. Not a lot, but... Yeah, it's... It's kind of aggressive on the palate. Yeah. Um, it, it does sort of have a buttery taste. And uh, it tastes nothing like the, the pre-light flavor. So that's just like... I had my fingers crossed that that is a godsend. That it uh, doesn't taste like the pre-light draw, which is good. Yeah, I was surprised that the uh, the spice, like you said, it, it's a little rough on the palate right away. It's kind of heavy through the retrohale through the nose. And it's making me think leather. It's got that leather sort of aroma to it. But uh, it is kind of aggressive across the palate and, I don't know, in the back of the in the back of the mouth where this where it sort of hooks around and you retro, when you bring the smoke up, right back at that edge there, it's kind of aggressive. It really has that buttery taste, though. I mean, I, I'm really getting that buttery taste. Yeah, leather. That, that might be leather in there. Well, it's off to a decent start so far. 
So uh, this is herfing heads. So uh, let's get to the herfing part. So Mike, uh, before we turned the camera on, we were actually talking about what we were going to smoke, and I suggested uh, the Rocky Battelle. I don't know. I, I don't remember what the, the actual name of the cigar is, but it's uh, it's tied in with the, the National Rifle Association. And uh, you told me that uh, you didn't have any more because uh, the box that it was in turned moldy and you wound up throwing 30-some cigars away. So what happened? Yeah, I, honestly, I, I guess the temperature just got too high all of a sudden, and we didn't have the air conditioners on in the house. And, and it was just, I'm surprised all my cigars didn't get it, but... The ones I have up there, there were there were a couple boxes that got moldy, and I mean it was, you know, they say like if you get mold on the wrapper, from what I've I've heard, you can, you know, kind of wipe it off, and you might be able to save the cigar, you know, uh, as long as the mold doesn't keep, it doesn't produce any farther. But if it's on the foot, then it's inside the tobacco rolls, and you just pitch them, and every single one of them. It was right at the bottom of the foot, and I honestly have no idea of what happened, how it happened. I mean, humidity went through the roof, temperature went through the roof, and it was on uh, one, I guess it was on uh, in the three different Tupperware containers. Okay, so you had, you had all this stuff in Tupperware. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking, I thought one of them was in the... Uh, vision humidor, but I don't think it was. I, I don't believe. I, I think it, it was all uh, Tupperware. You know, some, some were smaller and higher and some were the longer <clears throat> skinnier type Tupperware. How often are you in your, are you in and out of your Tupperware containers? It depends. I mean, Tupperware is nice. I can see right through it so I can, you know, see the top and I can pick it up and see the bottom so I really don't open them unless there's something I want to smoke at. I'm, I've always been kind of curious because uh, Tupperware is kind of airtight. Your, your humidor, I mean, it's got a, you, you know, your standard desktop humidor has a pretty good seal, but, you know, it, it does leak a little bit. So, you know, I'm wondering if, uh, you know, if you don't go into Tupperware terribly often, is it worth maybe putting a couple of pinholes in it to get a little bit of air exchange? I mean, I guess in the grand scheme of things, my coolers are no different because I have, I have weather stripping around the top so that when the lid closes, it compresses the... The, the foam and you know creates a seal so the only leak that I may or may not be getting out of my coolers is probably coming from that drain spout and on most of my coolers it's so clogged up with cigars I don't see much air exchange getting in that way so uh, just a sort of a fleeting thought why well, I actually have on the Tupperware containers I have there's a little flip top piece on the top that you can open and it, and it has a little hole you know for air exchange that you can actually pop that open um, I've never done it just because of the fact I mean I see around here especially in, in Pennsylvania here the humidity just goes bananas I mean sometimes I mean we could be start the day out at 23% humidity and by the time the day is over we're up to 100 and then the next day, it can start at 100 and go back down to 23 or something. Mm -hmm. But, you know, and that's why I didn't leave them open. I was just afraid it would fluctuate too much. But, uh, I mean, I even had problems. I, everything was raised, even in my regular humidor, with my cigar oasis in it. And, you know, since I have, I've taken them upstairs, because the air conditioner is in on now, and they leveled out. So I'm hoping I won't have any more episodes of that. <laughs> Lots of luck. Yeah, my, everything that I have is down in my basement now. And, um, you know, so it's naturally more humid than the rest of the house. You know, I haven't, because I, I have everything in either Ziploc bags with like a humidity pack in them or a travel humidor with uh, a Boveda pack in them or something like that, uh, I haven't seen too much trouble but you know you can definitely feel that it's kind of humid down here every now and again i'll uh, i'll i'm i'm really good for getting a cigar out getting it ready to go taking a picture of it posting it online and uh and having it sit in the ashtray while i do something then getting up and walking away from it and then you know two hours later coming down to, to find the cigar ready to go in the ashtray 
You know, there, there have been times, especially when it gets really warm here, that uh, I pick up the cigar and it feels like a sponge, you know, because it's absorbed all the humidity that's in the air. So it's uh, it gets kind of brutal here in the summertime. Yeah, I, I agree. And it's just uh, it's hard unless you have a specific storage solution. But, I mean, I people have asked me, you know, with beads or whatever, I had beads in some of them. I had that gel stuff in some of them. I had uh, Oveda packs in some of them, uh, and then I had, uh, what is it, Humida pack, I think is another one, like Oveda, mm-hmm. one of those. I, I had them. I mean, some of them I had more than one of them in at the same time, and it just it just kind of shocked me that they did that, because, you know, B and gel, I know, I think the Oveda packs, too, are supposed to absorb the moisture or the humidity if it gets higher than what they're set for. And it just must have, I, I mean, my gel was down where I could have added water to it, you know, that it, it wasn't soaking wet yet. So I, I honestly don't know why. And I think, and I think the, doesn't the, the gel have, uh, like, inherent mold anti-mold properties or something in it? See, I thought, I, I didn't really look up on it or anything, but I thought, you know, like you said, it did. I'm, I'm really not sure. I, I really do not know. Unless it, unless it doesn't get airborne, and that's just so that you don't get mold in the container. I don't know how that works. Exactly. Well, and see, after, uh, I, they might use something special in the gel, you know, like those, uh, like, it, like the liquid that they use. You know, I, I just use distilled water. You know, I, I don't use, I don't buy that special. Well, it's propylene glycol water mix. Yeah, I, I don't buy that. I just, I just use regular distilled water. Yeah, that's why. <clears throat> don't know. So how many cigars did you end up losing? It was like 37. I bet that hurt. And I guess it, I guess it wasn't 37 devil's weed. <laughs> You know, yeah, 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 you know, and that's the whole thing. <laughs> Not a single one of those damn things got mold. None of them. Even mold doesn't want anything to do with the devil's exactly. weed. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the mold was smart enough to stay the hell away. But yeah, it was like 37. And, you know, some of the stuff like I had LFD Perfecto Sampler. And, you know, all those going... Um, you know, visions. I had some visions go. Oh, what else did I have? Oh, some of the VSGs. I don't know that I'd have been giving up on those too easily. If I just saw mold on the foot, I might have just clipped the foot of the cigar and made sure that mold didn't get up inside. I did. I clipped it on two of them, actually, because I was thinking the same thing. I don't want to give up <laughs> on them. And it was there. Oh, wow. So it did get up inside. Oh, yeah. And it was like, you know, if it's there, I actually took one of them and tried to dissect it a little bit. And you could see it, like, on the inside. You know, instead of just on the outside, it was actually on the inside folds. Yeah, that's pretty bad. That's why, I mean, and this happened, oh, probably in a two- to three-day period. It was just amazing how quick all of it happened. Unless my hygrometers are that far off. <laughs> yeah, mold mold happens really quick. I mean, not the same situation, but uh, I have an old beer fridge. I mean, this thing has got to be from the 1950s. It's like, it looks like it was the Cadillac of refrigerators in its day. It was in the house when we moved in, and I've been using it for beer. But uh, it runs constantly, and it's one of the types that doesn't have a self-defrosting freezer. So every now and again, you have to get in there with an ice pick and a hair dryer and bust all that stuff out. Well, I wasn't using it anymore, and I was I was keeping one like half a case of beer cold in it. So one day I just decided, you know what? I've got all these air conditioners running in the house. I'm just going to pull the plug, and that'll be the end of it. So I pulled the plug. I let it sit for six hours or something. I got most of the ice that had broken off inside the freezer out. And uh, and there's a drain in it. 
goes down the back of the ref back of the the refrigerator and into a drain pan down behind. Well, there's like uh, these these rods that run through the top of the refrigerator section that I guess had uh, coolant in them and they condensed and when I unplugged it and I had some dripping inside their refrigerator. Well, when I went to clear out the beer and just get rid of it because it had been sitting for so long, I opened the, the refrigerator door up and there was mold all over the, the bands for the beer, the labels and stuff. So, I mean, we're talking a, a period of four days. I had like super mold growth inside this refrigerator. I mean, it's cool, it's dark, I mean, it's prime, you know, prime conditions for mold. Um, you know, in, in clear Tupperware containers, it's it's hard to believe that, uh, you know, you can meet all of those conditions, especially in warm weather, but, uh, yeah, mold just comes really fast. Yeah, and I mean, here in the basement, you know, I had everything in my basement, and, you know, the only time I'm down here on, on that side of the basement is wash day, of course. That's where the washer and dryer are. Monday? Monday. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, other than that, it's usually I'm on the, the other side of the basement over here at my laptop and, you know, smoking a cigar or whatever else. So, you know, it's still darker over there where I haven't seen. So, man, that's why. You know, it was just, like you said, it was just the right conditions somehow. Because we don't have a lot of light here in the basement. I mean, we have just tiny windows. It's all from the lights. So, who knows? Well, we definitely have some more things to talk about, but uh, let's kind of jump back to the cigar. How's yours going? Sure as I'm in the middle of taking it off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all right. It still has that same uh, type of taste for me. I'm not really digging the spice taste. It's it's kind of aggressive. Yeah, and it, it's kind of a funky taste. I don't know if it's just that buttery taste with it that that's giving me that. It's like it's not a clean spice taste that I'm getting. But, I mean, I'm I'm getting some actual spice through the sinus, yeah. but I don't know that I would say the aggressiveness on my palate is is that spice. I think it's just some harshness in the cigar. Uh, yeah, that, that could be too. But it's definitely irritating the back of my throat, um, the base of my sinus. I don't even know what the technical term for that is, like way back in here. But uh, that base thingy is uh, kind of agitated a little bit. But, you know, the flavor profile is not bad. It's, it's kind of buttery, spicy through the sinus. And that's about it. I mean, it's got a mildly creamy texture to it. You know, I mean, it's not incredibly complex, but uh, it's, it's really not bad. You know, this was billed as a mild to medium cigar when I saw that paperwork. And remember, I handed you the handed you the cigar. I said, you know, this is supposed to be mild to medium. This will probably be a good coffee cigar. Right. But uh, you know, it doesn't have that light and fluffy sort of creamy texture that I like with uh, a morning cigar. Um, it's got more of an aggressive spiciness. Yeah, it really does. And like, I, I know that. I mean, this thing says Connecticut Shade, but it doesn't taste like Connecticut Shade. Yeah, it, it really has that, that spice. Like you said, I mean, you know, you can feel it along the back of your tongue and the back of your throat. A little surprising. Okay, wrapper Honduras dash Connecticut Shade. So either that's Connecticut Shade grown in Honduras. Or it's it's available in both Honduran with a Honduran wrapper and a Connecticut shade wrapper. This uh, definitely does not look like Connecticut shade. So I don't know. So I'm, I I'm, I think they've tricked me into thinking that this would be a light and fluffy coffee cigar, and it's not. Yeah, oh. I mean the body is not real bad, or, but I mean or the strength or whatever you want to call it. But, uh, yeah, that, that, that spicy just slams in your face and really, really gets you. Like I said, I feel it a lot, like, at the very back of my tongue. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, are you drinking coffee? No, actually, we, we ran out, and my wife was over the store last night picking up groceries. 
And uh, she decided she was going to use this Bed Bath & Beyond coupon that came. And, you know, she was going to... Because Keurig coffee kind of gets expensive. And uh, so we buy all our coffee over at Bed Bath & Beyond when we get these coupons that show up constantly. We don't buy anything else there. So, I mean, I think we buy trash bags for the the trash can we have. That's about it. And because uh, it's this... It's, it takes like specialty bags. That's another story, thanks to Jerry. <laughs> that was a housewarming gift. Awesome trash can, but uh, bags get expensive as all hell. But uh, at any rate, uh, she didn't get back over to the store to pick up coffee. I was going to run out to the local gas station, which has decent coffee, big uh, sheets, and, uh, and pick some up, but. It was getting late, and uh, I didn't want you to wait too long, so I skipped the coffee, and I just filled up my water bottle, and I haven't touched it yet. I mean, it's not, the cigar isn't, like, really dry and making me crave uh, some sort of liquid, but uh, I don't know that this would necessarily have gone really well with coffee. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, too. I mean, I, I drank coffee earlier, went through the pot, and now I got my Coke. But, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd be afraid. Now, maybe with a... Uh, real dark black heavy coffee it might have melted with that spice maybe you know kind of taking a little edge off of it per se you know the bitterness of the coffee well the only way i drink coffee is with this black i don't like adding crap in it but uh <laughs> even so i don't know that the, i actually i'm kind of looking back beyond the camera at my booze shelf and uh you know, I think that this the spicy quality of this cigar would go well with, like, a sweet rum, like Zaya. I mean, it's 9.56 a.m. I won't be reaching for that bottle of Zaya anytime soon. Oh, come on. <laughs> Look, I got mine. <laughs> <laughs> Just, well, pull, you know, pull the cork and, and slam it. See how it, uh, see how it goes with the cigar. I might do that, then. <laughs> <laughs> I just say. <think. laughs> I need to get more too, man. I mean, I had two bottles, and well, the one we took up to uh, Cigar Fest, mm -hmm. and then uh, this was the one that I still had here. And there's, well, like about that much in both of them. <laughs> yeah, I've got uh, I've got a bit more than you, but I've got less than a half a bottle left. Uh, what I'd like to do is. Every now and again, I go into the liquor store if I'm passing by and I just look, uh, because uh, a lot of times it goes on sale for like 35 bucks a bottle instead of its usual $40 price. And um, if I see it go on sale, I usually pick up two bottles. Yeah. Well, I, you know, and a lot of people are out there going, <laughs> you pay how much? Yeah. 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 Here uh, in Pennsylvania, we can't order online that it's shipped here because of our awesome laws. And, and, and notice I was telling Mike that it's $35 a bottle when it's on sale because it goes on sale in the entire state. It's yeah. <laughs> like my store doesn't have it cheaper than Mike's store. It's uh, Everything is collective. Yep. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you can find that online. It's under $30 a bottle, I think, easily. I think someone mentioned uh, getting it out in California for $20 some dollars a bottle in the yeah. low 20s. Yeah. Yeah. What are you going to do? We, we pay, you know, uh, alcohol taxes are relatively high, but uh, we have no tax on those cigars. So. For now. For now. For now, it, it's, uh, I'm okay with it, the way it works out. I smoke a lot more cigars than I drink bottles of booze. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Speaking of uh, rum switch my earbud over here kind of irritates my ear after a little bit but uh it was my father's birthday uh last week week and a half ago something like that and uh, i stopped into the local liquor store i wanted to get him a bottle of uh, ron zagapa i don't know if you've ever tried it it's kind of like zaya but uh I, don't know, I, th I think it might be a little sweeter and uh it's a little smoother actually i like it neat i don't add any ice to it but it's a bit more expensive but uh i couldn't i couldn't find it and uh i couldn't find it in the store and i haven't been able to find it in a couple of the stores that i've gone to so you know i asked the guy if he had any in the back or anything 
And uh, he looks it up and he says, oh, you know, that's an $80 bottle of, of uh, rum. No, it's not. You must be looking at the wrong thing. It's, you know, it's like 45 something like that. And uh, I, I didn't end up getting it, couldn't find it. But uh, if you ever get the chance to try the Ronza Cap, the 23 Salerno or whatever it is, it's a blended rum. It's, uh, it's pretty good. Yeah, I'll try that. I mean, like, I mean, I don't, I don't drink a whole lot. I mean, this is the first, other than wine, that I've drank in years. And, you know, I don't, I don't have it every night. Have some in the morning, especially when I'm doing a review. <laughs> yeah, my, I usually, a bottle of Zaya might last me a month, month and a half before I drink it all. Yeah, well, like I said, I've had these. You know, and I, I haven't really had any. I just, just haven't. It's not what I heard on Stogie Four One One. Yeah, well, yeah, I kind of, well, <laughs> like the review you saw on Saturday. Yeah, that was in the morning. I started there. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, like I said, they're so far down now, and with all the cigars I just lost. I need to get the permission from the boss to, to replace some of the stuff. So have you bought any more cigars after that, that huge spending spree you went on with Cigar Bid? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I mean, I bought a couple uh, local over there in uh, Columbia, or, and I bought some like at Old World when I met up with uh, Corey. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, I haven't. Yeah, that, that kind of reminds me, uh, you know, Old World with Corey, we're, uh, I guess we're, we're arranging uh, a bit of a hearth coming up in right. a week or two, something like that. We right. still haven't, still haven't completely ironed out the details, but if you're local to, uh, either Lancaster or Columbia, we're, we're probably going to be getting together at one of those shops, uh, a couple of us for a uh, birthday hearth. Yeah, definitely. We just have to figure out. So if you're local... If you're local, send us an email or something, and uh, tell, let us know that you're interested in hanging out, and you know we'll we'll include you in the in the mass email that we send to one another about you know dates and times or whatever we work out. Yeah, definitely. It's uh, I mean our our timing is off just because this year IPCPR falls, you know, close to the same time that we're talking about doing the the herd, mm -hmm. but. Yeah, so it looks like we're, we're probably going to do it the week after IPCPR, um, which allows uh, Jerry to come hang out if he's able to, to make the drive. It's going to be like two and a half, three hours for him. Yeah. And uh, and some of the other local guys, uh, like uh, Dave from Oliva, may be in town the week after the trade show, so really don't know what's going on. But we uh, want to make sure that it's, it's sort of open to everyone in the general area that otherwise yeah. might be at the trade show. Yeah, definitely. And they're both nice location. I mean, each of them has lounge space. You know, it's, uh, the one has a private membership for the lounge, uh, for one part of the lounge, but the rest of it's all public. And then the other location, it's, as long as you buy a cigar, you can use the lounge space. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm kind of torn. I like the prices in Columbia, but I like the coffee in Lancaster. I don't know. I, I can't remember when Corey and I were there. I don't even think she was doing the coffee when we were there. I don't, I don't think you could get coffee. No. Really? Yeah, I can't remember. Well, I haven't been there. You know, I, I go there. I haven't been there since that, that Oliva event. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it's just, uh, you know, we're driving 45 minutes to an hour, and they're doing construction over the bridge over the Susquehanna River, and it, it can just be a nightmare to get there. And, uh, but, yeah, so normally I just head over right to Columbia because I can get there, you know, through back roads and uh, don't have to worry about all the traffic and crap. But, uh, yeah, I can't remember. I have to ask Corey, Corey, if you're watching this, let us know if you remember because I'm old. <laughs> Actually, uh, I've been hanging out with Corey a little bit. We get together at uh, cigar at the the one local cigar shop that I refuse to go to. I've been going anyway, 
Um, it, they changed the manager, and uh, it's it's much more comfortable. Although the the guy that's over there like follows you around, and it's really annoying. And you know, I I seem to think that I told you this already, but uh, you know, I went over there and I was meeting Corey one day, and I I got there early, so uh, I went in to the humidor, and that guy was sitting like on one of the recliners or something watching TV, and I was in the humidor. And like two minutes later, he gets up, follows me in. And uh, he asked me if I need any help. I tell him no. I'm, you know, I'm good. I'm just kind of looking around. So, like, he, like, goes to the back corner of the humidor and just stands there. And he's watching me the whole time and picking cigars and stuff. And every time I glance over at him to see, like, you know, if, you know, if you want to talk to me or something, like, he, like, would look down at his phone and start typing. <laughs> so, like, if, he's, you know, he's probably, you know, t- telling the Twitter Twitterverse all about this, you know, this guy that's, like, trying to steal stuff in his humidor or something but uh so I, I grabbed a handful of cigars and then on my way out i held the door for him because i knew he was behind me and like as soon as he sees me holding the door for him he like panics and he, you know oh uh, uh, uh no I'm not, I'm not coming out just yet and you know he goes back to typing on his phone i was like okay and let the door close and then i'm standing there at the register and a minute later he comes out and, and rings me up and then the same exact thing happened when uh when cory came in and then i met paul there and Paul's telling me the same thing. He's like, you know, I'm, I'm in the humidor, and this guy's following me around. And you know, I held the door for him, and he panicked. He didn't know. What, he didn't know what to do. So uh, I think I would go there. Wow. <laughs> so I don't. You know, I don't know whether they're telling him. You know, you need to be more diligent on on shoplifting in the humidor, or whether it's just his style. But it's it's just kind of weird. You know, you get that uncomfortable vibe in there. I mean, it's definitely better than that drama that you used to get over there. Right. But. Uh, you know, it's it's still not the ideal shop, and I, I try only going when I'm meeting someone. I won't go over there just to hang out on my own like I used to at Kennington. But, uh, you know, it's it's a place to hang out that's convenient and local. Yeah, and, yeah. Good. and uh, you know, we got together, did some shooting and smoking at uh, a local range, which was fun, too. So, you know, we've got, we've hung out a few times, and we've got some places to go. He's a nice guy. But, uh, yeah, you know, around here, like I said before, I mean, for me to even get to a cigar shop, I'm looking at half-hour drive. You know, I'd, for the closest one, and now that one that's inside the beer distributor doesn't even have a lounge anymore. Uh-oh. My earpiece is now dying. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> okay, might be switching to the big microphone here shortly. But, uh, yeah, so I don't, I don't really get out to a cigar shop very much. So the beer distributor did have a lounge, you were saying? Yeah, it was just, uh, it was almost like a little closet, you know, a, a, like a walk-in closet. <laughs> you know, it was... It, it yeah, was they had a really, closet, you know, you push the coats out of the way, you sit down on a bucket and did. smoke your cigar. <laughs> <laughs> no, no coats or anything, but, you know, it was it, maybe eight foot wide. You know, and then a good, probably 20, 30 foot long, maybe. You know, it wasn't anything that was just enormous. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, he, he took that away now, and he just has that as his office. So. Where, how many people were using it, do you think? Probably not many. And so it probably wasn't worth it to, to keep it going. Exactly. I mean, you know, a lot of the guys, if they, if they would come in there, they would probably come in for uh, beer. Mm-hmm. and just pick up a couple cigars to take with them. You know, I think a lot of people came in just to grab stuff, you know, to go. I, I, I never used it. But, uh, yeah, so, like I said, now the closest one is over there in uh, Columbia. I mean, I mean I, relatively close, close, I think there's like five shops where I can buy cigars, but only two of them have a lounge. I mean, we're talking like within 15 minutes. There's probably five stores that I can buy from, but only two of two of those five allow smoking. Right. You know, we have uh, custom blends. I don't. I don't even know if they still sell cigars. I just refuse to go there and buy cigars anymore. <clears throat> but uh, if, like one of the head shops, you know, they'll sell all the nice incense, and you walk in the store, and it's like, oh god, <laughs> kill me now. You know, um, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, 
roll your own tobacco stuff, you know, all that kind of thing. But, uh, yeah, I just quit buying there because it just, they don't have much of a selection for cigars in the first place. And if you go to a cigar shop, they seem to be in a lot better condition than yeah. one of them, a shop like that. <clears throat> and, of course, I mean, we have some gas stations that have cigars here and there, but... That's the, that's the bulk of what we have. Um, it's a lot of gas stations that are owned by the same guy. And, you know, he's more of a convenience store guy. And uh, amongst the, you know, the potato chips and soda and lottery tickets and cigarettes, he's got, you know, a cabinet or two of, of cigars in each store. One of the stores, he's actually got quite a few cigars, several cabinets. And uh, he seems to do fairly well, but, and, you know, I don't get over there very often. And I don't like buying cigars from a place that I can't smoke in. I mean, I might as well just get them online. It's more or less the same thing. Or pick up the phone and order them from, like, Buckhead. Yeah, yeah, especially if you want bundles. Buckhead's the guy to call. <laughs> yes, I had to get in. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, other than that, uh, you know, there's just no place really around here. And most of the time I'm smoking here at home anyway, and a lot of you know, you know, with my neck the way it is, I don't have my own car. You know, we just have the one car. And, you know, I just don't get to go really. and I don't know if I really would you know in all honesty I mean uh, like you said it's nice when you can meet up with people it's nice when you can hang out at a shop you know and, and talk to people or whatever but like you know the place in Columbia there is no real tobacco in I guess you know the only place would be over at a old world you know you could sit you could talk you could discuss different cigars coming out you know things like that where the place in Columbia is just basically you know you have to know what you want, really. They can help maybe a little, but, uh, which is all right. I mean, prices are awesome. <laughs> I can forego that little part with those good prices. Yeah, so I guess it's not new cigar smoker friendly, but, uh, you know, the experienced guy will find great deals. Yeah, and I mean, usually, like, if you're there, if somebody's in the humor, you could always ask them a question, they might be able to help you. I mean, I, I had uh, two people actually do that to me already when I was there. You know, they just asked. They didn't know, you know, I was a stoked your review or anything. They just thought I was a knowledgeable-looking guy. And... <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> they thought I was a woman at first and tapped me on the shoulder. And, <laughs> hey. <laughs> Well, Mr. Uh, knowledgeable looking cigar guy, how is your uh, how is your Alec Bradley Classic Blend going? Actually, it has actually, actually, it has actually. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay, maybe I have the hidden desire. The spice, the the roughness at the back of my tongue and everything has actually died down some for me. Um, it, it's still that buttery taste, and it's still more of a almost just like a natural tobacco that I'm getting from it. Um, I mean, some of that, like you said, that leather, uh, I was associating the leather more with the, with the spice taste along with the other taste, and it, it seems to have died down some for me. Yeah, I'm, I'm not getting so much of that leather, leather taste anymore. It's getting a little on the grassy side. It's uh, the way I'm perceiving it. But the flavor profile hasn't seemed to change out much. It's still kind of aggressive. Um, you know, it's the finish is, is becoming a little more neutral. Where before it was a little on the creamy side, now it's not really creamy, but not really dry. It's just kind of in the middle. And, uh, you know, it's probably medium body, low end to medium. I mean, it's not bad, yeah, yeah, yeah. but, uh, you know, it's not something to stop and cheer about. You know, I won't be calling any, yeah, yeah. you know, I won't be calling on my friends saying, you know, you need to go out and buy this Alec Bradley classic blend. But, yeah, so uh, far, not I mean, bad. With the, with, with these, now, unless, like, you, I mean, if this wasn't the actual final release blend, you know, I, I'd like to try one of the release ones just to see. But, uh, so far, I like the, uh, new weight the best still. I think it's kind of like a gun. I think it's kind of like apples and oranges. They they taste wildly different. But, 
But yeah, if given the choice between a new wave and the, the classic blend, I'd take the the new wave every time. Well, now what? Well, um, you know, just kind of glancing back at the little bit of notes that I put together for this little episode here. Uh, the next thing on my notes says that uh, we need to address the iTunes issue. Uh, we recently received an email, um, I think it actually came in yesterday, where uh, someone was looking for Stogie Review on iTunes and they could not find us. Um, this has actually been a problem for a little while now, several weeks, and that is completely my fault. I, uh, I got us booted from iTunes and um, I got us, and Jerry loves telling everyone this because he was he's telling everyone, you know, all these years, I thought it was me that's going to get us booted from iTunes, dropping the F-bomb. But sure enough, it was me. I got us booted for erotica. Apparently, my Donkey Punch review was considered erotica and uh, and got us banned, or not banned, but uh, they iTunes kicked us out of the public search. If you were subscribed to our feed, you would still get all the episodes, but you, w you were not able to do a public search and find Stogie Review up until very recently. I think Jerry finally got everything worked out and uh, and Stogie Review should be back in the iTunes public search feed within the next 48 hours or something like that. So uh, so we were out for a couple of weeks ever since uh, I did that Donkey Punch review. Your fault. Com amazing. You know, the guy that, uh, you know, doesn't swear or anything like that in the videos, does one little outrageous kind of, you know, one minute tack on at the end of a review and uh, he gets us booted from iTunes. Not I not booted, I you know, but uh, You're now the Stogie Review bad boy. <laughs> apparently. <laughs> so if you were searching for us and couldn't find us and was wondering why, uh, it's because I I did something really bad <laughs> and got us in trouble. But we should be back now. Oh, that is awful. And if you're interested in seeing the, the review that got us in trouble, it's, it's still on Stug Review. The video is just hosted on YouTube. What, ended up, what, what happens is all of our videos are hosted on Blip TV, and that feed is, is pumped into iTunes. You can fix that, and I'll keep talking. But uh, at any rate, uh, the, the Blip TV videos are pumped into iTunes, and that's where you see everything. So when iTunes was telling us that it was erotica and causing all kinds of problems, then I had to pull the, the video from Blip TV, and that would that would have essentially meant pulling it off of uh, Stogie Review, but we use uh, YouTube as a backup service. So the, the video is still there. It's YouTube. The video quality is a little lower, but uh, it all works. And uh, now we have our you know radio DJ ready to go. Okay, can you hear me? Wow, yeah, I can hear you all right. Let me turn my volume down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, my, my earpiece decided to die. It, it, I guess the battery is dead on it. And I can't, you can't plug it in and keep using it, which is really stupid. But thanks, Microsoft. On the bright side, that, that microphone sounds much better. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean... This one, Mike sent me this, and it, it's just amazing. It's just that you have this in the, you know, this whole big thing in the in the picture rather than, you know, just that little earpiece thing. So sorry about that, folks. I know you missed me. <laughs> so, so the recap, if uh, you know, for just for Mike, is that. Uh, the video is available. It's hosted on YouTube, and it is still on Stogie Review. Uh, just look up the. Studio Tobacco Donkey Punch Maduro review. If you'd like to see what got us in trouble, you're so evil. Go figure. I, I, all after all these years, I was the one that got us in trouble. It's funny. Oh, it'd even been better if it would have been Brian that actually did a video review and it went up on iTunes and that got us banned. Because that happens like what once every four years. <laughs> like, that would have been like, great. It's like a leap year, you know. It just once. <laughs> Once every four years. <laughs> so, uh, you know, the next topic of discussion, we're kind of burning through these relatively fast. But uh, 
Cigar Expo. Uh, I'm not going to be going to IPCPR this year. Uh, it really sucks because everyone I talk to keeps asking me if I'm going to be in Vegas and I have to tell all of them no and I get bummed out every time I have to do it. But, uh, you know, part of the reason was uh, IPCPR's uh, late announcement of the, the blogger rules and regulations and things like that for the membership, um, which kind of sucks that it it happened like six weeks before the trade show and you know uh rates started to rise you know shortly before they announced this uh, this, in, this the way that things were going to work so with uh with an increased cost cost and things just being really slow for me at work i, I really couldn't afford to take a week's vacation uh, from work with the way with things as slow as they are because if uh, a layoff crops up you know i need to use that uh that vacation time you know, to cover the layoff rather than uh, just sit around twiddling my thumbs collecting unemployment. Right. So, uh, so I'm not going to be doing IPCPR this year. Instead, I would like to do a couple of the smaller events. Uh, the Famous Cigar Expo is coming up in August, which I plan on doing. Um, there's a there's like a Delaware Cigar something. It's uh, it's at uh, a racetrack down in Delaware. Which uh, I would like to go to. I think we need to get. Uh, I think we need to iron out like the press pass things or something like that. Uh, I think Jerry's been in contact with them, and once I get the information from him, you know, I'll, I'll know definitely whether I'm going. But at this point, um, I am very interested in going. And if we can get press passes, I will drive down to Delaware and cover the event. Um, and that's about it as far as the smaller events go that I'm aware of. I would like to do a tweet up. Um, you know, if I can fly down to like Atlanta or something like that and hang out at Buckhead, that would be fantastic. You know, we could do that over a weekend or something. But uh, I don't know what's in the works. Uh, I know that Chattanooga tweet up is like really soon, and uh, I don't think I'll be able to make that because it's just too close at this point. But uh, you know, something I want to do, and, and you know, there's three events that I can do over the course of weekends where I'm using like virtually no vacation time and uh, you know it gets me out to more events uh, it's really unfortunate that I'm not going to be able to see all the manufacturers that I generally see at IPCPR because uh, the vast majority of them I only see them once a year at the trade show and that's going to kind of suck but uh, with Twitter and stuff we still keep in touch Twitter and Facebook and things but uh, among those events, events that I'm going to be going to is uh, Cigar Expo so uh, Mike tell us about Cigar Expo what do you want to do there? I mean, what is the uh, you're because you will be going with me. You know, what is the agenda as far as you're concerned for coverage? Smoking cigars. Oh, we have to cover it. Oh, damn. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, it's uh, you know, last year it's a it's a smaller event than you know, like a, a cigar fest or anything. Uh, the biggest thing I think this year I would like to get done is actually see the new building because famous is or has already moved i guess or they're moving this weekend or, or something to their new building um it's going to be interesting because they have a restaurant there you know they're going to have i think a bigger retail store space once it gets done and i i would really like last year i never had the chance you know to do like a sort of tour thing or anything like that and it'd be really nice this year if we could get to do that with their new facility um, that, that's one thing I really am looking forward to. I, I want to see the new, the new layout that they have. Cause you know, well, you were up there, um, you know, at, at famous, they even say, you know, the retail store space was an afterthought, you know, it's just a little right there inside the door and, you know, <laughs> it, they never even thought about doing it until after the store was built. So, or uh, the building was, you know, already done. So with them pre-planning this, it, it's going to be interesting. Yeah, I mean, if you were going to do a tour last year, it would have been, here's the retail space. You turn around once and video is done. <laughs> it's really, there's nothing to it. Or yeah. outside, there's a porta potty Two of them, actually. And there's a yeah. parking lot. And, uh, and there's a couple of offices. But, uh, you know, Brian and I got the tour when we went. But um, we weren't allowed to see the warehouse space. We couldn't see what we were. Actually, we were allowed to step in the door and we were contained to this, like, square on the ground. So we could look around from from the door, but uh, that was about it. I would imagine it's going to be more or less the same thing uh, at this new location where we can't really see 
the warehouse space, but uh, you know the store will be bigger. There's a, a larger lounge to look at and things like that. Yeah, it's you know, and it's always nice to see the manufacturers, you know, uh, the reps. You know, um, it's going to start getting kind of odd. I'm used to seeing a Jose Blanco at every event, you know, that that you go to, and with him retiring, you know, I guess he won't be doing much of that. I don't know if he'll still come to hang out at some of them, you know, some of the bigger events or anything like that, or, or how that's going to work. But uh, I, I'll, I'll miss seeing him there. He's a really nice guy. A little touch up here. But uh, the other than that, it, and, well, the other aspect we were talking actually before the show that I think is going to be neat is this year Cigar Expo is after IPCPR. So anything that they were releasing at IPCPR or talking about at IPCPR is already out there. So, you know, we'll be able to talk to them more about that, depending, you know, if there's anything else left to cover. Where last year it was before IPCPR, nobody wanted to say much because IPCPR was coming up. <laughs> oh, yeah, I failed to mention, the, uh, even though I won't be going to IPCPR, Brian and Jerry will, so I... Uh, Stay tuned for all the, the IPCPR coverage. Um, I think Jerry's only going for two days, but uh, the plan is to get as much done as possible in those two days. And uh, I think Brian's there all week. So, um, you know, you should be seeing lots of updates from him and, you know, Twitter stuff and things like that. Maybe we can <laughs> convince him to sure. type stuff and uh, <laughs> do a couple of write-ups and things. Oh. Yeah, it'll, I mean, like you said, I mean... Jerry and Brian will be there, so there there will definitely be coverage for IPCPR. But I, I'd like to get to some more of the events too, like you said. You know, some of the smaller things that are around here. It's it's just you know like with uh, flying with me, it's just not a pretty sight. So you know, going away for a weekend, you know, down to Atlanta or something, just yeah, I don't think it would work out too well. <laughs> it would be cool to do. So what are you looking forward to? At uh, Cigar Expo, you mean? Yeah, at Expo. Um, seeing people. Uh, you know, every year I say the same thing. You know, I want to spend more time hanging out with people and less time working. And I, I end up, you know, doing a lot of working and a little bit of hanging out. Um, you know, with lots of tables and food and the beer flowing, things like that, I hope to do uh, a lot of hanging out this year as opposed to Cigar Fest, where there was a lot of running around. I mean, we did get to hang out with quite a few people, but uh, not nearly as much as I would have liked. Yeah, now the thing with the uh, expo also, depending on what hotel we get to stay at, um, they'll, you know, everybody meets up outside usually of the hotel in the, in the evening. And it makes it nice. You, know, you can hang out. You can get to see people and everything else like that. Um, and like I said, you know, the event's smaller, so... Like you said, you know, we could sit down at a table and, you know, uh, we can get to meet a, a lot of people because they'll actually see us. We won't just blend in with 3,000 other. <laughs> yeah, because uh, Cigar Expo is, I would imagine it's quite a bit smaller than Cigar Fest, even though they are going to a bigger facility and things. Um, I would think we should be able to cover it relatively quickly. I know when I went two years ago, um, you know, walking the, the, the area, the tent, was, was pretty quick. I mean, like 30 minutes, and um, you were done, more or less. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, like I said, I mean, it is it is definitely <clears throat> a lot smaller, but uh, it's more sociable, should we say, I guess. And I don't know how they're going to do that. Last year, they did, like, with the, the food and everything, it was outside in a tent. I don't know if they're going to use their restaurant for that this year or not. I don't know, but there is a there is a menu available on the website, and it says something about, like, burgers all day with dinner later on. So if you can just, like, go grab a burger or something and a beer, that's, that's awesome. I mean, how can you beat that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, you're Definitely. walking around in the heat, you're getting hungry, and thirsty. Just go to the food tent or restaurant or whatever, grab a burger and a beer. I mean, that's that's awesome. If you would like to meet me, see me at the food tent. <laughs> 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 I'll get a special reserve seat for me. And Mike will have breakfast, second breakfast, lunch, second <laughs> lunch, third lunch, and dinner. 
and uh, you know, just email Set. us for a time slot, and uh, and Mike will fit you in into his schedule. And Walt will be covering the event. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, that is that. That's the that's the main thing I'm looking forward to is just the new building, just to see. And like you said, I mean, the people. It's always great to see the people. You know, it's it's like a once once a year, twice a year thing. There, there's that many people in one area that we can get to meet. I met quite a few last year. It was a good time. Maybe like Cigar Fest, you'd be able to introduce me to one or two of them. One or two, probably <laughs> 500, <laughs> 600. <laughs> that is still the best thing. I'm, I'm telling you, I, I tell everybody that little story. I think I even told Corey that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because he told me. <laughs> yeah, see, see. Yep. Yeah, that was awesome. But, uh, Anyway, I mean, now, like that Delaware event that you were talking about, I, I didn't really hear anything about that. I got a, a Facebook public event invite thing for it. And since you're anti-Facebook and never use it, you probably wouldn't have seen it. Yeah, I saw I had like six invites to, to stuff, and I didn't know what it was, really. So I just... Nine I think, times out of ten, I click that little X and delete it. A lot of times it's for out of state events, and if I accept it because my phone's tied in, I get like alert, I get reminders and everything else for <laughs> events in other states that I have like no interest in, in even knowing about. And uh, I got my phone reminding me in 15 minutes you're supposed to be in Sacramento. I'm like, okay, <laughs> nice. Hop on that supersonic jet and get there. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I really haven't. I haven't. I'm just not a big Facebook. I can see Google Plus is going to be that way too. It's going to be nice for, you know, like a Google Wave type thing for people to get together in small groups, discuss things, you know, stuff like that. But other than that, it just reminds me really of Facebook. That's what I got Twitter for. <laughs> Apples and oranges, man. They're totally different services. Yeah. Yeah. A lot different. <laughs> yeah. But anyway. <laughs> so what else we got to talk about? Nothing. I don't know, but I see a, a long, drawn-out, uncomfortable silence heading our way really yeah. fast because we're out of topics. And uh, and just to give me a little time to, to look quickly on Facebook and Twitter and things for discussion topics, why don't you tell us more about the... Alec Bradley Classic Blend. Since it looks like you're further along than I am, you have the band popped off yours. Yeah, I, I took the band off. I have about, what, three inches, something like that left. Um, and mine has really lost that harsh edge to, that it had to it. It, it really uh, came back down. I still get the spice through the retrohail. I still get that taste, though. And it, it's something... I, I really can't put my finger on it, but it's with the spice it's something that just it's not a very palatable taste let's say um it's okay but like if i would have it in something with food i probably wouldn't eat that food anymore um hangs around a little bit you know in the aftertaste uh I'll take a puff here and see how the spice is through the sinus here again while Walt looks down at his laptop. And sees nothing. <laughs> yeah, it's still spiced through the through the nasal cavity, you know. Um, but that even doesn't seem as pronounced as it was earlier. Uh, now, on the after, actually, it, it gave me a little bit of a burn. Not much, but that was kind of neat. Still that buttery taste. I mean, I am really getting that buttery taste out of this cigar. It's kind of cool. So, uh, I can't find anything, and your description sounds really good. Ditto. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what, what, have you, what have you been smoking that's been good this week? Oh. Well, not Devil's necessarily week. this week, but, you know, lately. As of late. Uh... Definitely new waves. I'm I'm still waiting for a box of them to come in. It, 
at the shop over there in Columbia. And, you know, I ordered a box from them. I just absolutely think they're a wonderful cigar, and I just can't keep them around. I just keep smoking them whenever I get them. <clears throat> um, what else have I smoked? Well, speaking of the new wave, we can kind of bounce back and forth. Um, you know, I guess it was a couple of weeks ago, I got a, a direct message from Ernesto Perez Carrillo, and he says, hey, well, you know, what do you think of the 60 ring gauge trend, or, or 60 ring gauges in general? So we got to talking a little bit, and uh, he says, you know, I want to send you some samples, and, uh, you know, I want to see what you think of them. So he sent me some uh, some samples of a 60 ring gauge EP Creo New Wave, and I got to say, it's it's really good. I don't know that I like it more than the smaller sizes, but it's very good. I mean, I've, I've had a little bit of burn problems with them, but, uh, you know, let's say I've smoked five of them. I, I may have had burn problems with two. So, you know, I don't know whether it's consistent. It's a consistent problem or if it's just two in that five or whatever, you know, you're, however it worked. But uh, they were pretty good. They were unbanded. And actually, I got some... I got another sampler pack today or the other day from uh, EPC, and it contained the, one of the new 60 ring gauge new waves. The the ones that I got didn't have a band on them, but uh, this one does. Big giant, big fat 60 ring gauge EP Creo new wave band. Right up my alley. <laughs> you know, I've had I, I've had the the Robusto, the Churchill, and the Toro in the new wave. I'd never had what they have a Corona or something out, don't they? Um, and now it's 60, but I, I think they have a Corona. For I'm not sure. I've always, the, the box that I bought was uh, Robusto. I've had some Toros before that. Um, actually, I think the Toros were a little better than the Robustos. And, yeah. uh, I mean, the 60 is richer, but it doesn't have the same level of strength that you get from, say, the Robusto or the Toro. And I do kind of like that strength in contrast with uh, the richness of the flavor profile. Yeah, and the, the Churchill, I, I didn't think was... Uh, it, it was all right. You know, I could smoke them, but I still think the Toro size was the best for me, you know, from the ones that I've smoked. Now, like you said, that 60, I'd definitely be interested. I'll have to keep checking for them to see how that, that smokes. Just Now, how about time of smoke for that 60? Was it increased or did it smoke in about the same amount of time as like a Toro? Um, it took quite a while for me. I mean, it, you know, I went shooting one morning and uh, I lit up a 60 ring gauge new wave and, you know, I went shooting, I stopped and got coffee on the way home. So, I mean, I wasn't smoking it like I typically smoke a cigar. It was more delayed, you know, the, the cigar sitting on the shooting bench while I, you know, shoot and stuff. So, dragged out I mean, I think I got like four hours out of that by the time I got home. And I, I think I had to relight it once or twice. So, I mean, you know, if you're, if you're doing something, you know, actively doing something where the cigar is spending a bit of time in the ashtray, I mean, you right. can easily get like four hours out of it. But, you know, I don't know what you would get just sort of sitting down smoking it. I think I got like three hours out of it or something. I, nice. I That's what I like. I mean, I... But I'm a slow smoker. I mean, it's, it's really tough to gauge smoke time based on my cigars. I mean, I keep pace with you when we're when we're doing these videos because, you know, they're more active. You're smoking a cigar, you're talking, things like that. But, you know, if I'm just down here by myself, I find myself sitting in cigar in the ashtray a lot to, to answer an email, to do something on Twitter, to, you know, look up something. So, uh, you know, the ashtray time is greater than, you know, when we're in front of the camera and stuff. So... I try to smoke quicker when I'm on camera with somebody because normally I smoke slow. <laughs> we, we would have a herfin heads. We, we should do those 60s. I have a four hour long herfin heads. But yeah, I, I mean, I'm pretty, I'm probably about where you are. You know, I'm not smoking too much fast. Mine's well, getting pretty potent, though. I'm, I'm here. I can't get real close to the camera because I got a laptop in my lap. But uh, resting smoke is like taking my breath away make my eyes sting. I got a draft coming at me and drifting this way, so I'm trying to keep the cigars at arm's length away from me because uh, it's getting pretty potent. Yeah, when I, when I smell the, the, smoke, smoke. the smoke, is yeah, 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 that's not, it's not a real pleasant smelling <clears throat> smoke, but 
I have, you know, I have a window here that's open, and I have my air purifier just blowing air, basically, because it doesn't purify shit. But, you know, blowing in it, and, you know, to try to put it out the window more. <clears throat> I, I, now I don't know about you, but the way the cigar tastes, I actually like the way it tastes better now than I did in the very beginning. And the other way, I liked it better. Really? Earlier on, it seems to be really aggressive now. Um, I mean, you know, we didn't talk much about the way it burns. The, I'm looking at a one, two, three, four hunks of ash in the ashtray, and they're all consistently half inch long. So, I mean, the ash isn't really strong. This isn't something that I would smoke when I'm reading because I'm not really paying attention to it. Next thing you know, I've got it in my lap. It's all over my book, things like that. Right. Um, the burn line is great. It's nice and thin. It's even. Um... The ash holds a nice shape. It's just not very strong. But uh, construction-wise and visually, the cigar is, is impressive. Uh, Taste-wise, it's you know it's mediocre. I think. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, w- I wanted to say it's. Uh, you know, I'm not going to rush out and buy boxes of them or anything else. Um, but uh, you know, I know you've got some some guy sitting down in front of his computer watching this right now, and he's going, "But it's a four dollar cigar. What are you guys complaining about? It's it's mediocre." You know, not really complaining about it, but uh, yeah, this size is four fifty. Right. Right now, four seventy five. Four seventy five. But uh, I don't know. It's cheaper than a lot Traviata, but it's not as good as a lot Traviata. Well, and it's uh, I guess it's a little bit cheaper than a New Wave. Yeah. But not by much. Well, New Wave Robusto is five twenty five. At least that's what I was paying for. Oh, okay. But uh, again, I, you know, I don't know that this 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 is even in the same league <clears throat> as the 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 New Wave. They're just very different, very very different. I wouldn't. It is, yeah, and I, I agree. I mean, it, it's yeah, it, it's really a a different type of smoke, and and that's the hardest thing, you know, when when you try to compare it to something. I mean, no cigar is right there with another one usually. You know, it's like, okay, Connecticut shapes, so then you lump all Connecticut shapes together. But uh, like you said, I, it really doesn't look like a Connecticut shape. Oh, mine's getting a crack. Well, ain't that nice. <clears throat> so you uh, you smoked the, the EP Creo New Wave and liked it. You smoking anything else that you like? Uh, well, that, there's the crack. See that crack going across there? Yeah. It's like a hieroglyphic snake. Yeah. It's kind of freaky. Huh. But anyway. Um, oh, and now, of course, my camera won't refocus. Just whack anyway. it. Yeah, fixed. pretty much. Just throw it up against the wall. Um, wow. What have I been smoking that I liked? I smoke a lot of the same stuff all the time i just why well, I, I live in a section you know i'm not at the point where you know i don't get like review samples like you guys do or uh, not review samples but uh test blends or you know anything that people want me to try usually um so most of my stuff i'll find locally and locally it usually takes a while for the stuff to get here um it's kind of strange to shop in columbia it usually gets things before anybody else for some reason but uh, I had uh, Emilio cigars. Uh, he sent me a uh, sample or you know, one of each of the AF1, AF2, and the uh, Grimaldi or Grim... The one that Brian reviewed. Jerry the reviewed? Jerry what? reviewed that. Oh, Jerry did like that? Grimalkin or whatever it is. They're easy to confuse. <laughs> <laughs> anyway... Um, but you know, I, I the F one AF two I actually enjoyed more than that one. Um, you know, other than that, I've been you know CAO Golds. I still smoke. You know, the Visions I enjoy, but I lost all them too. I really can't think of anything that just pops out that I smoked that was just so awesome. What have you been? smoking um well i did get the, i mentioned that sampler from uh, ep Creole. 
and it was the first. It inside of it was uh, an EP Carrillo Coraline Maduro, and it was the first time I had ever had a Maduro from EP Carrillo. Uh, I smoked the Robusto; it was fantastic. Uh, wanted another one, so I wound up smoking the six by sixty Coraline Maduro like the following day. Didn't enjoy it as much, but uh, enjoyed it quite a bit. And I have one left that I'll probably try to do some sort of re review on, so I, you know, can't smoke it unless I plan on firing up the camera. So that kind of sucks. I wish I had more. They were really good. And uh, I got a couple of core lines that I haven't tried yet. I mean, I, I tried the core line at the trade show, but uh, not since. Um, outside of that, uh, I've been smoking a fair amount of the Nesta Miranda Special Selection Oscuro Buckhead Edition. Those cigars are just fantastic. They're, uh, it's amazing how how that one added Lajero leaf changes the blend so dramatically. I mean, uh, we, it was it used to be a the Nesta Miranda Special Selection Oscuro was something that uh, was decent. I mean, my shop used to get them. Kensington used to get them when they were made by STC Cigars. I think it's STC uh, out of Honduras. It was uh, Gran Habano. I used to like them, and I really liked the Lancero. And then they, uh, I guess they, they decided to change gears and go with the hot hand and have. Uh, Pepin make them, and uh, and with Pepin making them, price went up a bit, and you know I just didn't think that they were really worth the money that they were asking for, so I stopped smoking them. And then I got uh, a Buckhead edition from Paul right after my daughter was born, and really enjoyed it. And then of course I thought, well you know it's probably pretty similar, so I you know I bought some more of the the regular Nesta Miranda, didn't really like them, and I've been smoking the the Buckhead edition ever since. I recently got a box, and before that, I got a couple of five packs. Yeah, I had. Um, I think he sent me one or two of those with an order that I did with him the one time, I believe. And uh, it, I, it was all right. It, it was enjoyable, but it was stronger than I normally like. You know, it's it's just I'm a wuss. Hey, I'll admit it. <laughs> oh, and the other one. I mean, I have. Thoroughly, 100% enjoyed those uh, Grand Habano, the Grand Reserve number threes. It was a 2008 Grand Reserve number threes or whatever. I absolutely love that. <clears throat> the ones in the cedar or whatever that is. No, um, the one, I, I think I gave you uh, at least one of them up at uh, Cigar Fest. Has the the beige band on it. I did a review on it. I don't think I have any. Oh, look. They're a lower. They're a lower cost. I did a review on them, I believe. Um, was that vintage or reserva or whatever it was? The one with yeah, the, reserva, the cedar. Grand. The, no, the one I'm talking about is the one that had the cedar wrap on it. It was most of the length of the cigar. That was really good. I don't think, I don't think these have cedar on them. Vintage uh, 2007 or Grand Reserva no. something or others. Yeah, this one was Grand Reserva number three. Pretty sure on that. I'm going to look it up because now I'm really confused at what the hell I even smoke. But... Uh, <laughs> Oh, it's I. I went through over a box of them really, really fast, mm. and it, it was just amazing how how good I or how well I like that smoke. Yes, I'm looking it up right now. I have to find the G's. I forgot my alphabet there for a second. Well, back to this cigar. I don't know how much more I can smoke it. It's like killing me. My, I'm starting to get congested. My eyes are burning. It's uh, taking my breath away. I'm, I, I'm. You see me scooting off camera. It's just to get the hell away from the cigar. It's, uh, it's pretty potent. The, the resting smoke coming off of it. It's that's a, it's. You know, I have, I have a pretty decent amount of airflow in here that I can get rid of it. Usually, um, sometimes the heavier smoke cigars kind of linger a little bit. I never really have problems. The only times I ever have problems in here is when I forget to turn the exhaust fan on. And then after like half a cigar, you know, the smoke is, is drooping from the ceiling and my eyes are burning and it's like, oh, duh, i got to turn the fan on. But in this case, I've got, you know, the, the usual airflow and the cigar is just killing me. It is. It's the Grand Habana Grand Reserva number three. I reviewed the Grand Robusto size. And it's a 6x54, basically a Toro in my eyes but uh i i did i mean i think that cigar is just amazing and 
the cost of it, I think it was, I, I know it was under $100 a box. But, uh, oh, and the other one, I, there's another one I, I smoked. Uh, I always screw the damn name up. It's a uh, two tone, it's the two wrappers. Uh, uh, the Cabinetta. Drew Estates. Yeah. Probably the Nicaragua. Yeah, the Nicaragua. The Cabinetta. Um, I actually, well, you you had one too, I believe, up at uh, Cigar Fest. Well, I was given yeah. the, the Lancero, and Lancero. I smoked it a couple of weeks later, and uh, it was okay. It didn't wow me. I like the, uh, again, I like the about the Toro size and them too, and I pick them up usually every time I go over to uh, Columbia because they have them there. Yeah, they're, they're kind of mild. I mean, when, when it comes to to Hoyt and Nicaragua, you know, I like the Antonio, the 1970. And I, I like the Celebration, too. It's been a really long time since I've had one. But uh, I bought a box of those a couple of years ago. I, mean, I don't even know if there's any left. But uh, those are pretty good, too. A step down from the, the Antonio. But, uh, yeah, when it comes to Hoyt and Nicaragua, I like the, the Antonio. Don't think I've ever had one because they're... They scare me. <laughs> no, I think you got some and you gave them away. Did I? Yeah, because I was I was going to give you one at Cigar Fest, and I think you said, "Oh, I have I had some of those. And I gave them away." Then I was afraid of them. Yeah, that could be. I was scared. I gave them away. <laughs> I was a wussy. <laughs> but um, you know that Hyder Nicaragua is doing that new project with uh, Drew Estates. My Uzi weighs a ton. I haven't yeah. tried them. I wasn't one of the uh, one of the bloggers to get samples. Um, the packaging looks fantastic. I really like that brown paper packaging. But uh, it sounds interesting. Brian reviewed the cigar. And, uh, you know, maybe one of these days I'll get to try it. But, uh, you know, they're large ring gauge stuff. So, um, you know, I'm not eager to run out and try one just because of the size. But, uh, you know, it, it has grabbed my interest quite a bit. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to try, actually, the bigger size. They have, what, like a 6, 7, and 8 inch in a 60 ring gauge or something like that. Or is it a five, six, seven? Can't remember how it goes. But uh, yeah, I, I would it's definitely like, like to try the bigger one. It's like Billy Club tree limb and the entire tree. It's uh, they get pretty big. It's amazing. But yeah, you know, I, I like the longer smokes. I like to be able to sit down here a couple hours and smoke <clears> a cigar and you know just chill out. But uh, I, I was thinking of something. I can't remember what the hell it was. You know. You know, it's amazing. The cigar does not taste as bad as the resting smoke smells. It still has a funky taste, and I, I can't place it. <clears throat> I mean, it's not so it's not so grassy anymore. It's got like a hay straw kind of a taste. Um, still some spiciness. Uh, it's just like natural tobacco across the palate. Still uh, middle of the road as far as, you know, uh, creaminess versus dry medium body kind of harsh in the back of the throat but uh but yeah i'm trying to stay away from it as far as i can yeah see now it's killing me um i'm down here and and harshness has come back for me now it actually went away for quite a while there in in the center now it just uh it definitely came back it's not. I mean, it's not an awful cigar. I could see smoking them here and there, but it, I, I just don't see me grabbing one, you know, like a daily smoke or anything. <clears throat> yeah, I, I really don't see myself picking these up very often. I mean, um, you know, even even for you know four to five dollars or whatever they are, five fifty. Did say what the prices were. Between three ninety five and five fifty. Um, yeah. I still don't see myself picking these up very often. Uh, you know, it's just not really my thing. It burns great, uh, you know, visually, and the construction is is awesome. So, I mean, it's a good solid cigar. It's just not my, my not my thing. Yeah, like I said, I'd like to try one that's <clears throat> actually been released, and just to see if there's any difference or not. You know, I don't know. Like you said, you've had these for a little while, so I mean, you've aged them. <laughs> <laughs> Accidentally, yeah, yeah. But anyway, um, I cannot think of what I was that popped into my brain. Really can't. Oh, I still like the Room One Hundred One Eight Hundred Eights. 
but the price is just I just pick them up very 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 rarely well like well and you know of course my devils oh my god I can't live without them Well, this cigar is getting pretty harsh. We are practically out of discussion topics, so if there's anything that you want to close out with, um, feel free. Otherwise, we can just uh, wrap up this video. Nope, I'm about done. Just hopefully we'll see a bunch of people at Cigar Expo when we go and look forward to, you know, Brian and Jerry's IPCPR coverage, which is, you know, they actually had tons and tons of coverage up there, which will be neat to see all the new stuff. So I'm looking forward to that myself. That's all I got. And again, if you're uh, local to Lancaster, Pennsylvania or Columbia, Pennsylvania, uh, shoot us an email. And you know, if you're interested in hanging out for uh, a herf that we're small, informal herf that we're putting together, uh, shoot us an email, and you know, we'll get you the details as soon as we know, you know, what's going on. Yeah, definitely. All right. With that said, uh, happy smoking and uh, take it easy.